Welcome to this lecture review. Here we're looking at Guides to a Computer Forensic Crime Investigation, 5th edition. We're looking at Chapter 15, and this is going to be the Expert Testimony in Digital Investigations. This is the second to the last chapter in our book, so we are almost done. Alright, so, the point of this chapter is to look at the guidelines for giving testimony as fact, or as an expert witness, to describe the guidelines for testifying, explain a uh, guideline for testifying in depositions and hearings, and to describe the procedures for preparing forensics evidence for testimony. All right, so preparing testimony. Uh, fact witnesses, they are different from an expert witness. A fact witness presents facts. They provide facts found in an investigation. They may be the investigator, where an expert witness is going to be more of a expert in that area. They may not, the expert witness may not have performed the investigation, but they can talk about the qualifications and the methodology of the fact uh, investigator. Fact invest, or the fact investigator or fact witness explains what evidence is and how it uh, was obtained. They do not offer conclusions. They only present the facts. For an expert witness, uh, they have uh, their opinions based off observations, and those observations could be off of the facts that the fact witness has presented. Opinions are formed from the experience and deductive reasonings. Reason, not reasonings. Uh, opinions make the witness an expert. Actually, I kind of disagree with that. I believe that qualifications for an expert witness is going to be experience, education. It's going to make someone that is above board, uh, that has the appropriate background, that makes them the expert witness that allows them to offer an opinion. Preparing for uh, further for and preparing for testimony, we have to be able to establish communication early with the attorney. Uh, kind of what role you're playing, learn ab about the complaint, the opposing experts and facts and witnesses, uh, facts and or witnesses, the opposing attorney, uh, kind of their strategy. This is not so much done for the investigator or the expert witness. This is more for the attorney. I'll learn the basic points for a dispute. Again, this is more for the attorney side, not the investigator. Keep notes in rough draft uh, form and record only facts. Keep opinions to a minimum. Uh, we've talked about this and we'll talk about it more in the next chapter, but anything that is written down officially uh, can actually be or is required to be given to the opposing uh, counsel. Confirm your findings with documentation. Collaborate with other peers if necessary and if you're allowed to. Digital forensics is known now developing as a peer review process. If I provide an investigation and uh, I document my findings, I may have uh, a peer come in to review the process to either support them or to tear them apart. Check opposing experts to find strengths and weaknesses. Uh, again, this is not really done for the investigator. This is more on the attorney side. When preparing for your testimony, considering the following questions. What is my story of the case? What can I say with confidence? Uh, how confident can I be? What is the client's overall theory of the case? Some of these are going to get really subjective. What's the scope of the case? Have I gone too far? You need to understand your role and your scope and don't get blindsided by the attorney's goal, the attorney's scope, because as the investigator, you're dealing with facts and as the expert witness, you're dealing with the opinion, but you need to communicate with your counsel to, for verification. Document, document, document. Make sure everything is repeatable. Validate your tools, uh, verify evidence, make sure everything is above board. Uh, 
with checklists, that's going to be subjective. I always use checklists. That way I can show my steps. I can show what I've done. And if there's areas that I've done poorly in, it's going to be presented there. But that way someone comes in after the fact, they can actually flow through what I've done and follow step by step. Uh, checklists in final report. You may not write it as a checklist, so you're going to, it's going to be more subjective, but do keep that in mind. Collecting evidence and documents, and what tools you're using, what versions of those tools. Have they been verified? Are they the appropriate types of tools? Things like that. Lastly, maintain uh, custody. Always keep a record of chain of custody of evidence. That is critical. Collect the uh, right information. Collect only what is being asked for and or what you have permission to collect. If a warrant or a subpoena is for very specific items, you collect only those specific items. Pay attention to things like date and time, uh, both on your workstation and on the device you're working off of. Document, document, document everything. Keep uh, see, I would keep everything, and then in your final report, focus on the successful output. Do document the previous runs for verification, but your main goal is successful output. Keep your notes simple. Uh, again, this is going to be kind of subjective. Define any procedure you use to conduct your analysis. Explain the step-by-step -step process. Do not record conversations or telephone calls. Make sure you understand state and federal regulations. Talk with the attorney you're working with. Evaluate court expertise, uh, both yours and opposing counsel. I, again, that may be more on the attorney side not on the investigator side. Understanding what makes an expert witness is extremely important. Understanding things like the curriculum beta, uh, professional experience, uh, what's being used to qualify your testimony, continuing enhancing your skills, your development, uh, accomplishments. Uh, again, testimonial logs if necessary, education, publications, things of that nature. Prepare definitions of technical concepts. Understand your audience. Understand uh, grammar and language that you're going to be using. Make sure to include examples. Uh, hardware, software, I mean, make sure that you prepare definitions for common jargon ahead of time. Some legal action generates interests from the news media, but again, you're going to be working with your attorney to see what you can and cannot say. Verify with your attorney before doing anything. There are procedures during a trial. Again, verify with your attorney. Understand the trial process. Understand the order of a trial. Uh, again, there's a general outline, motion, and uh, line, uh, the impending uh, the jury opening statements, plaintiffs, defendant, if there's a rebuttal, closing, and then jury instruction. Again, this is going to be more of a, a, a very simplistic order of trial. Uh, there could be more details, but I mean, for the most part, this is the overall flow. Uh, again, provide qualification of your testimony. You have to verify that you are a expert in your area. Uh, testifying, be polite, be professional, uh, act like an adult. I mean, pretty. a lot of this is pretty straightforward. Guidelines uh, on delivery and presentations. Uh, again, you're, you're going to be verifying with your attorney before you do any of this. Uh, are you allowed to do uh, movements? Are you only at a stand? Uh, Again, maybe avoid humor, build a reputation with your explanation, tell a story, 
with the uh, based on facts so that you can actually render an opinion. Use chronological order to describe events. Step A, B, C, D. Make sure it's logical. Make sure it's able to be flown. Uh, it flows well. Make sure that uh, you're explaining it in enough detail without using the appropriate jar without using jargon so that your audience can follow. If you're allowed to use jargon, then again, make sure that your audience understands and is able to grasp what you're explaining. Uh, dress appropriately. Uh, don't memorize your testimony. Memorize key points. Uh, state your opinion. Support it. Explain. And end with a restate of your opinion. Again, work with your attorney for all of this. Preparing your testimony uh, with the attorney that hired you. That's pretty common. Uh, how is it? How is the data collected? How is it stored? Uh, how did you get copies of it? Were they uh, hashed? Was it a bitstream copying? Uh, was there data that was deleted? How did you recover it? Uh, how did you do it? Again, you're going to be working with your attorney to explain or to get the wording for your testimony. Maybe not so much the wording per se, so that came out kind of wrong, but you're going to go over your testimony with your attorney so that you can make sure to have the language correct. Use graphics if possible. Uh, we're human. We like graphics. It makes it easier. Uh, try to avoid common testimonial problems. Conflicts of interest is always a big one. Uh, payment before testifying. Again, work with your attorney. Don't talk to anyone during a court recess. Uh, Again, super subjective, but you're going to work with your attorney. Most of this chapter is work with your attorney. Understand prosecutorial, uh, prosecutorial, I cannot pronounce that today, misconduct. If you found exculpatory evidence, you have an obligation to ensure the evidence isn't concealed. Initially, you should report the evidence to the prosecutor handling the case. Be sure you document everything. Techniques. Again, you're going to be working with the attorney. Uh, wording is important. Being able to provide a clear overview of your findings with the appropriate language. Uh, how you've done your steps. Is it systematic? Practice testifying. Use your own words when answering questions, but work with the attorney to get the overall structure down. Make sure you know the following terms given in testimony, independent recollection, customary practices, documentation of the case. Make sure you are able to present your background and qualifications. Uh, you want to avoid any vagueness. When you're using graphics in a presentation, make sure the jury understands your explanation of the graphics. Use your own words. Keep in mind that certain words have additional meanings, so understand the duality of your words. Be aware of leading questions. Never guess. Look at facts. If you give an opinion, support it. Be prepared for challenging or pre-constructed questions. Did you use more than one tool is a common one. What used? Uh, well, what tools did you use? Why do you use one tool over another? Did you try other tools? Things like that. A pony attorney, uh, opposing attorneys will try to declare you that you aren't answering questions, so keep that in mind. Make sure that you practice and you work with your attorney. Attorneys make speeches and phrasing as questions. Attorneys might put words in your mouth, so be patient. Most jurisdictions now allow the judge and jurors to ask questions as well. Avoid feeling stressed and losing control. Never have an unrealistic high self-explanations when testifying. Everyone will make mistakes. Keep that in mind. Avoid being argumentative, avoid being talkative, talking too fast, being too technical, acting surprised or unprepared. All right, so let's talk about depositions and hearings. Depositions differ from a trial testimony. There is no jury nor judge. No judge. 
Opposing attorneys preview your testimonies at trial. There is also a discovery deposition, which is part of the discovery process for a trial. Lastly, testimony, preservation, depositions. This is requested by a, a client, and this will preserve your testimony in case of scheduling conflicts or health concerns or time issues. Some recommendations for depositions, again, act like an adult, dress appropriately, be a professional, work with your attorney. If you're preparing a written report and opposing attorneys might attempt to use it against you, keep that in mind. Focus on facts. Make sure any opinion that you uh, render is supported with facts. Recognizing the deposition problems. Uh, discussing any problems before deposition. Identify any of the negative aspects. Work with your attorney. Work with your attorney to make sure that you're not omitting, in, omitting any information and that you don't have anything that's going to box you into a corner. Keep in mind that you have a correct, uh, that you can correct any minor errors that you make during your examination, but don't hide them. If uh, you're being asked a question that's very difficult, take time to think about it. Take time to prepare an appropriate response. Testifying at a hearing is generally comparable to testifying at a trial. A hearing can be before an administrative agency or legislative body, such as like a court. Often, administrators or legislators' hearings are related to events that result in litigation. Judicial hearings are held in a court and that are determined by the admissible of certain evidence before a trial. No jury is present in a judicial hearing. We're going to be looking at extracting email from a folder and analyzing the email's metadata in uh, our book. Again, all of these, we're going to be doing them at a later time in later videos. Here it is. Step-by-step -step process. Prepare. Last thing is going to be prepare for your court testimony. Again, prepare your answers for questions uh, that you took to extract any of the information. Here we were looking at a lab where we were doing uh, email metadata. So you want to be able to pr prepare a response to how you did your task. Explain how things worked, making sure that you don't use any highly technical jargon. And that's the end of this chapter. We went through uh, cases that go through trial, kind of looking at a fact witness versus expert witness, uh, how you do it. Again, work with your attorney. I think work with your attorney was the big one. Depositions, the different types of them, understanding the documentation process, understanding the depositions and guidelines for testifying. And that is actually the end of this chapter. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.